share with us the topic of deep dive into Ruby require. Now please join me in welcoming our speaker, Hiroshi Shibata. Hello. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Oh, so, so I'm happy to talk my presentation, my presentation in Taiwan again. So, so today's, today's topic is a deep dive into Ruby's require. So, so we started start to explore our daily stuff. stuff. So the, it's a self introduction. So I'm Hiroshi Shibata. So I'm an uh, open source software developer at Endpart. So I am a proud member of the Ruby core team Ruby James and Bandra core team. So my work is develop Ruby programming language and the Ruby ecosystem and the infrastructure of Ruby languages. So thank you for using Ruby and Ruby James and Bandra. So my hobby is a Ruby and the game TV game, TV game and the correct flash toy around the world. So this photo is one of my favorite flash. So you know most famous vegetable in National Park Museum. So I finally I get this crush uh, yesterday. So let me introduce Antipod. So Antipod is a company that provides a SaaS platform for the construction industry like building and housing and etc. So we are developing developing a lot of products to cover all people whether in the office or outdoor stuff, outside stuff. Our goal is to make them happy through the digitalization we use by Antipad. So this image shows some of the products provided by Antipad, which are widely used by our customers. Notably, Ruby is used in all of products like customer management and sales management and cost management or a lot of management of products we develop. So in Japan, construction industry is over the 10 trillion new Taiwan dollar market size. So we need more speed to develop products by Ruby and Rails. So Antipat is a strong supporter of the Ruby ecosystem because Antipat is hiring me as a full-time open source developer for the Ruby languages. Okay, so now let's begin by introducing the first topic, the today's presentation, running Ruby's required. You know, we will look Ruby libraries and how Ruby loads them. So require is the most famous method which wrote additional Ruby code into your code context. If you wish to use RSS, RSS library, it, it can be easily loaded like this example. Require is a method, so returning true if you can load RSS and false if you cannot. Require will search from the road path. There are road paths like your Ruby installation passes. Additionally, require can load C extension such as .so in Linux platform or .bundle in macOS platform or .dll in Windows platform. Require will fall back these extensions. If you load big decimal .so in macOS platform, require Ruby's require load dot bundle too. You, you don't, don't care uh, these extensions yourself. If you need to only the current path, we have required relative. Required relative will not search from the road path, only current path. Ruby also has a road method, which is an alternative to require. Road that search for your road path, same as require relative. And you need to full file name contains extension like dot rb for using road methods. Load can load Ruby code multiple times again and again, which is a key difference with require and require relative. If you wish to load your code with some modification in same process or IRB context, 
road methods to help may help maybe help that. Finally, Ruby also has a cool feature called auto. Uh, this feature only loads Ruby code when the constant is referenced. This is difference with require and rows, which are immediately evaluated by Ruby interpreter. In this example, when calling bundler definition, Ruby will load bundler slash definition dot rb at that time. Autoload offers the advantage of a smaller footprint compared to require or load or require relative and other stuff. Since bundler is a large code base, so using require would result in slow boot time. Autoload takes care of this load time. On the other hand, so you need to load all of code in boot time for improve, improving in execution time, so you should use require, not autoload. Okay, it's a uh, uh, basic knowledge of require or load. So next, we will run how to load an external library from RubyGems. Ruby has a library question called RubyGems. So which are the installation of many of libraries from the RubyGems or? In today, so we need to know the two parts of RubyGems. So first one is the gem spec. So the gem spec file describes the gem specification classes. The class of gem specification defines metadata such as the gem name or version and the platform and the other metadata. Next one is a extension of for the Ruby language. Ruby gems extend the original Ruby require for loading libraries with a gem spec file. This extended require is main topic in this in today's talk. In tomorrow, so Samuel, who are a member of the Ruby gems and the Bandla team introduced how Ruby James org works now. I suggest to see his talk tomorrow. Okay, so at first we need to run gemspec. So gemspec can be accessed using the gem.loadedspec method in IRB at any time with your environment. For example, the gemspec of rack is provided here as an example, including its dependencies. Dependencies are the most important part of the metadata. This section shows a combination of names and versions, and RAC has a four dependencies such as mintest, plugins of mintest, and rake. So they are all backed up for the development. So you can use RAC without additional dependencies for your application. Back to Ruby James. So the original Ruby require can only load from load box. However, so Ruby James has the ability to automatically add gem passes even though that do not exist in load path. They are extended require. The extended require is more than 115 lines of Ruby code. Actually, Ruby James extends the kernel one method with uh, additional 15 lines of Ruby code uh, like this. So therefore, extended require is slower than original Ruby's require. So let's look in depth of them. So why slow down extended require? So extended require will call find bypass method to each require in your code. So this method has stubs method that returns all of the gem spec files from your Ruby installation path. So extended require will search all of the gems, which causes your require to be slower than the original Ruby's require. For example, in my environment, so I share the gem home across multiple Ruby versions. In result, this number is over the 2,800 gems. So in my environment, so I try to load only big decimal like this, uh, like this. So it took uh, 0 0.27 seconds to load. 
Why was the frame environment with unsetting gem home environment variant is uh, 318 times faster? So finally, that ordinary require with uh, disabled gems uh, option of Ruby interpreter. Uh, this result is uh, 514 times faster. So if we RubyGems has a solution to resolve slow performance of uh, extended require. So this is achieved through the use of the gem method. This gem method enables version locking. In this example, extended require, we wrote version 13.1.0 version of rate in default. So you can specify any version using the J method in your Ruby process. After that, so you can load break 13.0.0 version instead of 13.1.0 version. Uh, the J method to accept the version range. So if you specify greater than 12 and lower than 13 to J method, you can load break uh, 20.3.3 version. So using the J method, you can inject the library path specified by you like this. So as a result, uh, extended require doesn't need to search the all of the gem space. It's making extended require faster than nothing. So we will now run the J method. So RubyGems is written in purely Ruby code. It's enabling easy viewing and development of RubyGems. The gem method creates a gem dependency instance, including a specification such as the gem name and requirement, that is a version or range. So RubyGems will activate the gem spec that was generated by gem dependency. So gem method is only like this. So we have run about the extended require and the gem method offered by RubyGems. So however, we still face some problems. The gem method is only suitable for managing a single or few gems. If you hope to develop an application with many of libraries such as Rails or Hanami or large frameworks, so the gem method is not useful since they break with a multiple requirements. So if you require the use of Rail 7, so you must also manually specify the correct version to all of gems that support Rail 7. So additionally, if you can't specify versions with a gem manually yourself, the extended require will search all of gem specs and make slow down your application. So the, it's time for Bandra. So Bandra has come to resolve the two, two problems of RubyGems. I will introduce Bandra. So RubyGems has a uh, user interface and dependency resolution, but RubyGems don't have version locking feature with a uh, Ruby process. Bandra provides the, this essential version locking functionality which can be achieved by using a gem file. So you know this example. At first, you need to specify from the source site of a gem provider, like this RubyGems.org. So if you, use, you want to use a private gem server in your company, you should add to your gem server with a source list of DSL like this. After that, so you can specify gem name and requirements same as uh, gem method of RubyGems. Bundle will generate the lock file name the gem file lock in default like this. Lock file has all of the dependencies declared by gem file. In this example, we specify RSS gem. So this lock file contains RSS and its dependency named re-xml like this. And the lock file also has a platform like a CPU and OS architecture and its version. Uh, this example shows the 
um, 64 uh, Darwin and 2323 23 is a former version, Mac OS. So finally, look, doc file has a version of Bandra when doc file is generated. So Bandra also extends on various RubyGems classes and methods are introduced. So this example is the extension DIR method in the gem specification class. So Bandra, uh, sorry, so this uh, extension DIR indicates the directory of the C extension library in RubyGems. So Bandra needs to refer the specification of a Git repository in the gem file, like uh, top of the list, gem rails and git, uh, GitHub slash rails slash rails. So, so but the original, original extension DIR couldn't handle the name of a Git repository. repository. So, so this, this extension are Ruby. Ruby. So RubyGems extend the Ruby's original require. So Bandra extends so Ruby gems methods. So Ruby gems and Bandra will slow down in your Ruby code. So let's run Bandra using the Bandra exec command. So we learned so Ruby gems and Bandra extend many of original Ruby methods. So Bandra resolve this slowdown with uh, modifying load pass and reverse extended methods. So we will look it with a uh, gem file with only a single RSS gem specified as an example, which has a library dependency called reXML in gem spec. It's the same as previously. previous. The key part of uh, key part is a uh, bundle setup. When you execute or bundle, exec, foo, like or spec or Rails or the Rubacop or other methods, so bundle exec set environment variables with the bundle underscore prefix while modifying related environment variables like a path or Ruby opt or Ruby lib and etc. So after that, so bundle exec call a bundle setup method. So finally, bundle exec called the full command using a kernel exec uh, that is a building method or Ruby language. So we can understand so how works bundle by looking the implementation of bundle setup internally. So this method is roughly 20 lines like this or Ruby code. So it's easy to run. So firstly, so bundle setup checks both the gem file and its log file. So in this time, bundle will install gems need to be installed based on the log file definitions. The following phase, phase uh, removes any unnecessary passes from the load pass. When bundle is invoked, the clean load pass method will retain relevant passes for the bundle and the Ruby gems and the Ruby system, Ruby system passes. So after clean up the load path, so Bandra invokes specs, spec for method of Bandra definition. So this method returns the gem spec correction method with the name and the version in the gem file with a resolution engine. The return gem spec in this case, uh, Bandra and the ReXML and the RSS, only three gems. In the next step, so Bandra will reset the environment variables again. And finally, Bandra setup will invoke uh, Bandra Ruby gems representatory point methods. So this method will replace all of the extended methods by Ruby gems. So under the Bandra environment, you can use the original Ruby methods, like uh, require and others. So, so this, this is the final step of bundler setup. So we now the passes of declared gems by J file into the load pass. The load pass is a structure like this if only RSS was declared in J file. So the RSS uh, 
zero dot to two dot to line and the reactive boundaries for Barbara. So, so finally, finally bundle up this uh, mampass and the log file such as the gem file log and the returns bundle at the mid So, so this, this enables us to load the only latest versions of RSS and ReXML and bundle versions under the bundle exec. With this environment, Ruby only searches for these passes and the Ruby system passes, which results in a fast Loading process rather than gem methods and extended require with a Ruby gems. Now that you have seen how bundle functions, so we also need to run the type of standard libraries. I manage the standard library for the Ruby language. I will provide an explanation of a default and bundled gem. So I I organize the default and bundled gems for the Ruby release package each year. Ruby has a unique library known as the default gems, which can be required independently of the gem file and updated through the gem update command of Ruby gems. So if you want to know what gem is default gems. You can ask Ruby and their gem spec via IRB like this example. So to require RSS, and we can follow this stack, then call the default gem question method with the gem loaded specs for RSS. It returns false. So RSS is not default gem. So in the other hand, OpenSSL case returns true. So OpenSSL is a default gem. So, so if you want to know Ruby language, so you can, you should ask Ruby itself. So why we can use default gems without the declaration of a gem file? Because bundle Ruby gems replace entry point to inject the default gems into internal list of bundle setup. So if you specify the different version of default gems on gem file, bundle setup, skip them. So, so bundler will resolve the dependencies by spec underscore by underscore name in this example. Ruby also has a bundled gems. So bundled gems are pre-installed gems that are automatically installed during the installation process without requiring any further gem install command. Uh, this Bundle the gems is same as the local installation of gems, such as a Rails or a Rack or a Lake or other similar gems. I'm working to format Ruby standard library to the bundle the gems from the default gems or standard library. Bundle gems are developed on GitHub, not Redmine. So we can involve a new contributor easily if you are interested in bundle gems like RSS or NetSMTP or et cetera. So you can contribute it to now via GitHub. Using bundled gems and the bundle environment differs from default gems. It's important. For example, you need to declare a RSS with gem DSL if you want to use RSS provided by bundled gems. So, I change, I will change the big decimal as a bundle of the gems from the default gems in Ruby 3.4 in the next year. So your application will break when upgrading from the Ruby 3.3 to Ruby 3.4 without updating the gem file. Because bundle will inject only default gems, not the bundle of the gems. I understood this frustration, like, uh, why do we break my application for updating, upgrading its version every year? So I have taken care of this issue with uh, Ruby 3.3. So if you need to use gem such as a CSV, so Ruby will issue a warning on Ruby 3.3, right? Like this. So, but uh, Ruby 3.3 RC1, is, uh, sorry, so this warning feature of Ruby 3.3 RC1 is 
uh, broker. So <laughs> I need to resolve uh, this broker feature uh, until uh, Christmas final day. So this warning can be suppressed by adding CSV to, into your gem file. This feature may be useful for your blazing work. So this mechanism also extends the require feature. So I have included this extension in Ruby 3.3 and enabled it and the bundle environment. At first, so I create an alias for the current require called no warning require. Then I replace the require with the, this warning feature as shown. You can easily extend require in this way. So, but bundle will revert extended require by RubyGems for the performance reason. So we don't throw that way this way carefully. So final topic is namespace feature. So RubyGems and bundler are enabled to resolve activation issues, which occurs when attempting to activate a gem within a RubyGems web. As a result, so gems activated by RubyGems or Bundler cannot be used in your application. Example, in example, so RubyGems and Bundler use some of the default gems in their internal. So you may encounter this error message in your Rails application like this. So uh, you have already activated the timeout, blah, 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 but your gem file requires timeout, blah, blah, blah. So because RubyGems or Bundler activate the different version of timeout, like uh, 0.3.1, but your Rails or your, your Ruby application wants to use timeout 0.3.2. So this can't resolve in this RubyGems and Bundler now. So what RubyGems approach? So firstly, remove conflicting drivers such as the default gems from the RubyGems and the Bundler and rewrite a simple Ruby code instead of default gems. So we, we've been rewrite uh, mutex and it's called M module in, with a pure Ruby code in this year. So secondly, adopt the vendoring approach. So Ruby gems and bundler already have some libraries such as uh, URI and file utils on the, for net HTTP or other stuff in their repository. However, this approach is hard way with uh, some times. So when the Ruby core team, so including me, so we release the URI with a parameter fix, so we must also security release of Ruby gems and the bundle too. So we need to our Ruby language and the Ruby gems and the bundle so releases in same time. So it's uh, very, very hard. So, so as, as a third approach, approach, if RubyGems Ruby and the Bundler Bundle require the use of C extension such as a Dyens or JSON library, we must rewrite them in a Ruby code and vendor them. So, so it's the most hard way for the RubyGems and the Bundler. So, so this, this is an example with a C extension case of RubyGems and the Bundler. So they have a YAML parser written by pure Ruby core. So we can use Psych that is a Ruby YAML wrapper for the Ruby. So if we are Ruby gems or Bandra use it, use Psych in Ruby gems or Bandra, so you can't specify any versions of Psych for their your Rails applications. This is because we can't provide the JSON format output with uh, RubyGems and the bundler. So, so it's, it's a, a tough problem. problem. In this feature, so Tagomori san introduced the namespace functionality to Ruby in this year. So this feature enables the loading of multiple C extensions within specified namespaces. So RubyGems and the Bundler may be resolve the activation issues of C extension by namespace, maybe. So furthermore, namespace resolve 
the all of the vendor files like uh, file you to use or URI on the other soft of Ruby James and the bundler. So we live from the hard work of vulnerability handling. Stay tuned to complete the Morrison's work in the future. So Rubykai 2024 is landed in Okinawa, where is a beautiful sea and resort island in Japan. So maybe Okinawa is nearly for Taiwan Island rather than Tokyo people like me. So you can easily do go. So I'm looking forward to talk progress of future works of Ruby James and Bandra for you at the uh, Ruby Kike in the next year. It's time to wrap up. So I introduced the key knowledge of Ruby James and Bandra and the package manager. So you now have an understanding of why Ruby James throw down your application and how to make bundle operate faster by modifying the load bus. And I also introduced the future works of the standard library of Ruby 3.3 and 3.4. So Matt says, so Ruby is programmer's best friend. So my goal is to develop Ruby programming language is best friend by you. So I appreciate it and Pat for allowing me to my time to develop uh, Ruby and the Ruby ecosystem. And thank you for attending my talk today. Thank you. Thank you, Hiroshi Shibata. Thanks for your informative serving during. Now let's have a um, organization. Please raise your hand if you have any questions. Thank you for your great talk. Uh, so my question is that I saw a lot of uh, default chains are becoming bundle chains. All to make all default chains bundle chains. Sorry, uh, I, I can't hear you ask question. <laughs> so uh, my question is uh, a lot of uh, Default chains become bundle chains, right? Yes. So it's our direction to move all the default chains into bundle chains. Oh, okay, good question. So my plan is, uh, uh, my plan is uh, all of the default chains uh, may uh, should be promoted the bundle chains, but so we can't promote them like uh, Ruby gems stuff is like uh, net HTTP or timeout or other kind of core standard library. So timeout or uh, net HTTP is stay in default gems uh, in the future. But other stuff is like uh, CSV or big decimal is uh, maybe promoted uh, bundle gems in next year yeah, or next next year. <laughs> Easy one. Easy question. Yes. Uh, yes thank you. <laughs> is uh, is the bump running in C code or in Ruby J? Uh, only Ruby code. Okay, okay good. good. Okay. So, so if, if we upgrade, upgrade Ruby gems in JRuby, or a list to provide for that warning, or how do we make JRuby do the same warning? Oh, okay. So uh, this one new feature is only rounded in the C Ruby repository. So, but it's a uh, uh, all of uh, pure Ruby code. So maybe a uh, JRuby team so uh, port or uh, copy and uh, my code into the JRuby uh, repository. Is that in the the prelude, the Ruby gems prelude code? I uh, uh, no no. Uh, so this one new feature is only called by uh, new rest band bundle version. So JRuby, uh, sorry. So maybe only copy and put and the package is uh, enabling the this one in feature. 
Have anyone have questions? Or if our speaker want to share something else? <laughs> we have five uh, minutes. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, this meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a short break right now. The next